Hello, I'm Yasmin from Delta Strength Doula, also from Rise Birth Center. And I wanted to cover today how a baby transitions when they're born. So what happens to their lungs? What happens to the fetal circulation system? What happens when they're born? How this all changes and you know what the effects are and, and why it's important to know this information. So it might make a difference in how you provide care for your clients, and it might also make a difference for a birthing parent for what you want for your child. So just to be more informed, some of this information is not as broadly known. So I'll share my screen and start with showing you what the fetal lungs look like. So while a baby is in the womb, the lungs are filled with liquid. There's millions of air sacs in the lungs, and they're all slightly deflated, but filled with the liquid. That's the fetal state. They practice the the breathing motions, but it is, it's a liquid. All right, and then when they are born, that liquid has to leave, obviously, so that they can breathe and take in oxygen and take in air. So the liquid, you could think of it as getting drained, but it's actually getting absorbed. So it's going out of the air sacs, it's being absorbed into the lung capillaries and joining the blood circulation system which means that it's increasing the volume of blood. So it's coming out of the air sacs, joining the blood circulation system, increasing the volume, okay? Increasing volume, it's joining the blood system. Once it's leaving the air sac, first that needs to happen so that there's space for uh, inhalation to happen and that there's space for the air sacs to take air now for the first time when the baby's born. I think I didn't mention, but this is a very zoomed in photo of what's happening. So there's millions of air sacs. If you went very small, you would see this kind of motion. Meanwhile, the liquid is leaving the lungs when the baby is born. So that liquid again joins into the bigger, broader circulation system. The volume increases from the liquid, from the air sacs, to the lung capillary is being absorbed into the blood system, which makes the blood volume increase. The other way the blood volume increases is more blood coming in from the placenta, okay? So the two of these combined is what's increasing the blood volume for the baby. Now we'll look at what's happening with the placenta and uh, how that works in combination, why it's important. So for the fetal circulation system, the, the lungs are bypassed. They're not really getting much of the blood circulation while the baby's in the womb. They only are getting 8% of the circulation. So 8% of the circulation is coming to the lungs while the baby's in the womb. They're not really seeing the full picture, just the 8%. Another thing that's important to note is that the blood is going to the placenta and it's coming from the placenta. The blood is flowing in two directions blood going to the placenta, coming from the placenta. And this is possible because there is a shunt, as you can see in the very basic imagery, that is open. So when that shunt's open, the lungs are mostly getting bypassed and there's blood to and from the placenta into the system. And when the baby's born, this shunt closes and stops the flow of blood to the placenta. So the blood that was going to the placenta will now stay in the system. But when that shunt is closed, it does not close in two directions. You're still having a one-way street from the placenta. The blood from the placenta is coming back into the system. So that's your second way of getting blood volume increase. You're having the blood come from the placenta. I will repeat this again. Blood is still coming from the placenta when the baby is born. It, that shunt just stops from going to the placenta, but the blood is still coming from the placenta. When that shunt is closed, it also means that the circulation is starting to increase into the lungs. So I'll stop sharing so I can give you more crazy hand gestures in a bigger picture. <laughs> so blood to the placenta is stopped shunt is closed, blood from the placenta is still coming. Both the volume 
that we saw from the lungs, from the um, liquid from the lungs that's joining the system, that volume is starting to come into the lungs and the blood from the placenta is starting to come into the lungs. The lungs, again, was at 8% in the fetal stage, the blood circulation. It needs to get up to 55% for the respiratory system to set up and start the circulation and start that continuous breathing. The blood from the placenta is bringing extra oxygen with the red blood cells, you're getting extra oxygen into the baby, not extra, but you're getting the oxygen the baby needs into the system from the blood from the placenta. The red blood cells are bringing the oxygen that the baby needs to bring both the level up to 55% to start working and to stimulate continuous breathing. So the baby is stimulated to keep breathing and not do the practice breathing, but continuously breathing. So the same way that you and I would, that we're just breathing without thinking about it. That happens only when they're getting enough oxygen into their blood and into the lungs. So blood from the placenta, bringing the red blood cells, increasing the oxygen, the blood from the fluid is coming into the lungs, the blood from the placenta is coming into the lungs, and you're going from 8% up to 55% of the circulating system is coming into the lungs now. So it was at 8%. It needs to get up to 55% to set up the lungs, to set up the breathing, to set up the respiratory system so that the baby will continuously breathe. All right, I'm gonna show you this again in another way. This is my lung. I need to get up to here, 55%, to start activating the lungs um, or the respiratory system and to breathe continuously. So I've got my blood from the fluid that's increased the volume. In this hand, I've got the placenta blood coming in the sand. All right, so you're filling up the lungs. There's more blood in the system all as well. Now, if you cut the, the cord, you're gonna be stopping this flow of blood. So you're only getting the increase of volume from that fluid, but you are still short. Let me see if I can, yeah. From the lighting, you can still see that you're not at that 55%. So you're not getting the perfusion in the lungs that you fully need. You need all of the cord blood to come into the system to hit a spot to, to optimally set up the lungs. And that will start your continuous breathing. There's so many things about cord blood that's good, like the stem cells that are coming in, the, the iron that's coming in. Um, you know, you could have a whole session just on that. Iron from the placenta is the iron that can get absorbed into the system. Iron from a fortified pill for an infant is not going to be as effective. Iron from a supplement is not gonna be effect as effective. The iron from the placenta blood is what's effective. So there's higher risk of anemia, there's um, higher risks if the respiratory system is not set up. There's also higher risk of epoxia. Um, there's one more risk because again, this is a full circulation system. The full circulation system turns on once you get the more volume. So from the two sides, you're getting more volume into the full system. So now parts of the body, like the ends of the little capillaries and the fingers and the toes, those are starting to see blood possibly for the first time. So that's why we'll get to it. But when the baby's born, they're a bit of a dusky, pale kind of color, maybe gray or purple, um, because that the blood circulation has not reached all parts of their body and it's not in full, full volume yet. So they have a different color when they come out. That's why they, they change after a few minutes. But these capillaries then are at risk of collapsing if they don't have enough blood volume in their systems. Okay, so I think, I think that sums this portion up. And then we'll go into now what, what kicks this off. Why does the baby start breathing? So signals are sent to the nose and the mouth. There's lots of little receptors. I shouldn't say to the nose and the mouth. I should say they're sent to the receptors around the nose and the mouth. So when the face hits air or when air comes in contact with the face for the first time, you're getting the nitrogen molecules on these receptors and you're getting gravity on the receptors for the first time. And this sends the signal to start that transition. So this is what's gonna, air hits the face, 
the body gets the message, close the shunt, start taking the liquid out of the lungs, essentially increase the blood volume from both the placenta and that extra fluid being absorbed, fill up your lungs, and then you can breathe. That's what's happening all in a short span of time. All right, so, oh, well, here's the summary again. So in the fetal state, there is a shunt that's open, blood is flowing in two directions, to and from the placenta, the lungs are mostly getting bypassed. When the baby's born, that shunt closes, the blood starts going into the lungs, setting them up for the first time, and the blood is still coming in from the placenta. So that is the quick and hopefully easy way to understand why it's very important to get the cord blood. Another reason, this is like setting up the baby system for the first time and setting it up properly. I know we talk a lot about just the extra, the blood belongs to the baby and, and there's different reasons, like again, the stem cells and the iron, but understanding fully that it's setting up the lungs is not something that's talked about as much. So I hope that helps. I hope that helps your practice. I hope that helps birthing parents. And if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. It can be reached on either deltastrengthdoula.com or risebirthcenter.com or risebirth on the handles of things. <laughs> so I hope to hear from you and I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.